the, I guess, remake of episode one of Block A. And this time, I'm not alone. I like to Hello. welcome. Let me finish. Sorry. Let me welcome. Mr. Samurai, the commentator from SCD. Or as I say, Dojo, for those of you that don't watch YouTube. Yes. Oh, who brought the dog to the arena? <laughs> I have All no right. idea. Well, we're going to get into this. Uh, it will be the same matches from the original uh, videos. Uh, um, and uh, Mr. Samurai, uh, I'm not sure you got the opportunity to see those matches, but so this will be very new to you. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. But I'm sure you'll love nothing more than to be able to watch these competitors fight it off. As you already know, um, as I run down the world of the G1, uh, all the competitors were selected to for each block, representing companies like WWE, Impact Wrestling, uh, Call, and such as that. And the winner will walk of this G1 will walk away with the UWA Championship. And we'll be starting off with the representative of of AEW, Sammy Guevara, and a representative call, Eric DeVille. And I'm sure you know a lot about Eric DeVille, uh, Mr. Samurai. Somewhat. I haven't seen him wrestle myself, just been... I just been him, am I what I could find from him, so... I hope you're hmm. ready. Well, the Wicked One definitely ready to uh, try to get his first five points. So, Sammy Guevara, as this match is going to get started, if uh, you don't already know the rules here, uh, winner by pinfall or submission, you get five points. Uh, win by ca a count out, you get four. A draw results in both competitors getting two points. And, of course, if you lose, you get nothing. So. Zero. Exactly as he, Mr. Samurai said, as these two are gonna start off. Uh, I mean, this is gonna be a very interesting match. I think Sammy Guevara and Eric Deville, both uh, junior heavyweights, so I think they'll be able to keep up with each other. But do you think uh, either man has an advantage in speed? Mm, I wouldn't say so, but oh, it just reminds me. You see, oh, and oh. As now this match is really getting started, uh, Sammy Garage, he's showing a little bit of that power uh, using that scoop slam. But we've seen a lot of power in UWA from Eric DeVille. Uh, even being able to use a, um, a doctor bomb that he's been named the Midnight Power Bomb. Uh, usually when he combos, uh, he first always starts off with that anti-happy ending followed by the Midnight Bomb. That he's even used against... Uh, uh, individuals like Keith Lee so Eric's also got that hidden power behind him as well so, oh try to go in with that discus clothesline but got caught by Sammy with the head scissors this, this is only we're only about three minutes in and this has been nothing but fast paced and hard hitting as now these two are gonna test each other with the strikes who is gonna fall first and it's Sammy uh, well actually no it was Eric but Sammy fall right after uh, now Sammy just managed that last and but unfortunately the strikes were def uh the effects of the strikes came in right after as again i gotta say i think uh Ari might have a bit of advantage when it comes to strike but oh here we as i was just as I was saying that uh sammy Kavara actually trying to get a uh single legged boston crab there and oh rolled up out of the fireman's carry sammy trying to get a quick victory here first tried the submission then the roll up sammy Kavara, it looks like he might have a strategy Another tactic paid off, unfortunately, for him. No, as Eric DeVille connects with that suplex, and now going for a roll-up of his own. One. And, oh, only a one count. And it seems like both men want to try and get a vi quick victory here. Uh, of course, I mean, you never know when uh, your next match could be, and I mean, each match, the damage you take could just will only, see, will only count up. Uh, so injury is something you definitely don't want to get in this tournament. Essentially, to the such a big prize in the line. And oh, look at that standing, um, uh, standing moonsault there. They tried it, but now, unfortunately, uh, still, even after all the attacks we've seen, uh, only one counts for both guys as Eric Deville connecting with that. Uh, I'm not really sure what that maneuver was off the top rope, but it was. It, but unfortunately for him, it only got him a one count. 
I don't even know what kind. It was too close to the ropes. Well, that is true. I don't really think we've seen Eric Deville go to the top rope too often. Oh, that just shows though, like how determined these guys are gonna be. We might see things that we don't normally see out of them. As oh, Sammy going in with the strikes, but missed that flying kick and got brought down. This has been very fast paced, but it just does not seem as either men really have been able to take an advantage in this match as, he can, as Eric got connected with that clothesline, but Sammy came back and locked in another submission. That's the second uh, second or third time he's locked a submission hold in. You think maybe he might be looking for a submission victory? Possibly, but it's not looking like it's going to work in the long in well, short terms. That, that was a close one benefits. there. That was a close one there. Uh, yeah, after that combo of strike tried to go for the cover only got a two count now both men are down after a kick to the head I thought for a second there that maybe Eric DeVille had an advantage in strike But it seems like Sammy Guevara might be turning out to be the better striker in this matchup As now big, the legs too. Uh, Definitely which is gonna help to deal with um, that midnight power bomb he uses that Eric likes to use. He usually uses it in a deadlift. So getting rid of the legs will take away the ability to even use it. Oh, as I said that, connects with a standing variation of the midnight power bomb. But Sammy Kavar kicked out before even a one due to the rope break, nope. and then followed up with that shooting star. And oh wait, Sammy Guevara looking for a dive. Oh my gosh. Sammy Guevara putting everything on the line. God damn. But now these men are, I was just about to say, are in the danger of getting counted out, but they quickly got back in the ring. Did that the maneuver, a, a big maneuver that Sammy Guevara needed to hit to try and take advantage in this match, Mr. Samurai? Possibly, but at the same time, it doesn't help much if you don't capitalize on it. Definitely. Oh, come he, on, man. As he's taking time to, he took time to taunt there, and that might have just got him caught. There's that fisherman, that cross-legged fisherman buster by Eric Deville. I believe he calls that the dead man, uh, the dead man level uh, buster. And now oh, Guevara with this headlock here, but I believe Eric got his foot on the ropes, and oh, Eric with a combination of punches and kicks. Oh, try to go for something, but got caught. No, apparently Sammy wanted to do a little backflip before connecting, going to a striking contest. This is something that might hurt Sammy Guevara in the future. As he connects with the super kick, he takes too much time to taunt. Do you think that might cost him? Oh, yeah. And the way Sammy Guevara. Oh, Canadian Destroyer. I don't know. Uh, out of nowhere and that could end it right there, but he does oh, oh come on He flips him off and then immediately puts him in a headlock here That is actually a smart thing to do after doing that driver to the that pile driver trying to maybe really make him tap But I don't I don't well, I see Eric still <laughs> Eric still kicking out. Yeah I, he had everything, so. I don't think Eric Deville knows the, the I don't think the wicked one knows the meaning of giving up Oh block the kick there now a kicks to the midsection and now Guevara off the top with the shooting starts to the back and then an another backflip and now a super kick! Sammy Guevara piling it up the damage but he's not capitalizing with covers. Oh kick to the midsection. Oh look at that combination of strikes and now off the ropes to basement drop kick. Now what is this? Oh, Eric with the sleeper, and now setting up. What is he looking for? PK. This is really big back and forth. Oh, Eric Deville stopped himself on the ropes. Do you have the? Does it look like any either man have begot, gotten any closer to victory? I almost want to say Sam might have it because of the fact that he's got all the strikes in. But the problem is. It's Tony might actually backfire in his face. And there you go, the Ken, another pack. He tried to. Oh, wait, roll up. Oh, that, that double stomp by Eric DeVille. You're right. <laughs> that was. That's going to take the win out of you, but somehow Eric, Sammy Guevara able to get back into it. And now looking for the 630 Centon to the back of Eric DeVille. That's going to do some damage, but instead of going for the cover, he goes for a knee to the back of the head, and then a super kick! But somehow Eric DeVille gets back up immediately and connects with a series of forearms. Something tells the Eric's 
Eric's been in these kinds of situations before where he's taken a lot of punishment, so... Sammy might be in for some trouble. The question is, how do you... Oh, wait, out of nowhere, there's the unhappy ending. And now, new, normally, he would go after... Go for that uh, midnight powerbomb, but Sammy Guevara grabbing the leg. He saw it coming there, uh, Mr. Samurai. Mm -hmm. He saw the finish. And if he can keep doing that, because Eric Drew normally never goes for a cover when he hits the anti-happy ending. He always combos. Oh, why is it Rana? He always combos it with that midnight powerbomb. Uh, do you think that's a mistake on uh, Eric DeVille's part? It can depend on the situation, but at the same time, it's Ooh, always a smart idea to, to go for more damage if you could, if it combos two of your biggest moves into one. That is true, and now oh, another roll up followed by another double stump, but Sammy somehow popping up to his feet. Another Irish whip. Who's going to get the best of this? It is Eric DeVille again for the third time, and he's, he's signaling that this is done. Is Eric DeVille counting oh, his victory too early? They chopped Sammy right in the chest. No, Sammy. 20 minutes. Yes, we are near 20 minutes. And a super kick right on the chin. And oh, nowhere near the road. Shooting star. One, two, throw. That was so one point. How in the world? Eric DeVille not only got up, but he's signaling for the end still. And now, Sleeper, PK! And now, wait, he's following it up! Here it comes! Anti-happy ending! But somehow, some way, Sammy got up to his feet! And we have just hit the 20-minute mark, and these guys are testing strikes again! Inseguri! How are these two still going at it? Oh. How are these two still going back and forth like this? And but when does it come to a moment where it might be a bad idea to be going this long as oh you see right there Eric Deville clutching at his side there after uh, hitting that rolling senton the exhaustion starting to set in and you just gotta wonder will this affect their both men later in the tournament? When is it a good point to just decide to quit? As again, Sammy Guevara with the senton to the back. That's now, oh, Sammy with the Samoan drop, sending him to the outside. But somehow, Eric DeVille just keeps recovering quickly. Do you think that, uh, that this... Oh, another anti-happy ending. I was about to say, do you think that quick ability to get back in the ring and without much thought can cost you as you, you, you might, it just might make you move too fast? And now the double stomp followed by the cover and the saving of our kicked out. No, wait, Lyrica, Dr. Bomb, the midnight power bomb, two, and again, Sammy kicking out. How in the hell? We are 23 minutes in, but I, I was trying to say, oh, Eric DeVille pushing Sammy Guevara up, but Sammy flew back in with that flying kick, but this time now got caught, roll up, two, and a kick out. I was, as I've been trying to say, at what point did these guys either decide it's time to give up and just allow, just take the loss so you have the energy to keep going later in the tournament? Mm-hmm. Is that a worry that these two could be facing, that they might burn themselves out? And again, we see Sammy Guevara showing that co that cocky confidence of his. He knows how good he is, and he just but he's taking time out of what could be used for offense. As he's running off the ropes, and all oh, flying in with a knee. It seems Sammy Guevara might be in control. Oh, missing the roundhouse mm -hmm. kick there. Knee to the back. I mean, knee to the face. Apology. It's hard to say... Who, which one of these men are in control as they both hit so many big moves on each other. As now, Eric DeVille setting Sammy Guevara up top. What does he have planned? Wait, reverse. Oh, slice bread off the top. Wait, he's going back up. And now, the moonsault onto a standing Eric DeVille. Both men are down. Oh, but somehow Eric DeVille got back up. Wait, caught him. Unhappy ending. And you know what this follows. Here comes Midnight Power Bomb! He can't He's away for the ropes! One, 
two. What? How? How in the hell? Not only did he kick out, but he's going up flying again. Sammy Guevara with now a Samoan drop on the floor. Sammy Guevara oh. refuses to quit DDT. These guys are about to approach the half hour mark on this match. These guys don't want to quit. Eric DeVille, the wicked one. Sammy Guevara representing the Inner Circle and AEW. Both of these men want to get the first victory representing their show. As Sammy Guevara hits another Canadian Destroyer. And he goes right for the cover this time too. And again, Eric DeVille kicks out. Irish Whip, off the no. They refuse to quit. What is it going to take? Super kick. I hate to say this, I think this is more or less Sammy's arrogance and just Eric's no die attitude. And now we're gonna go off the ropes. Down the knee to the back. Eric DeVille, uh, I mean, uh, Sammy getting creative with some of his strikes, going for the back of the head rather than the front. Does that do more damage? Mr. Samurai, he connects with another super kick. Does hitting someone in the back of the head do more than hitting them in the front? I'd say yes, because it seems like you're basically hitting the back of the neck. Right where that spine starts, but... You, well, you, oh, and Hurricanrana, and just uh, when you talk about the neck, Sammy getting driven down on his, and now getting caught again with I don't even know how many times we've seen that unhappy ending. But here comes another Midnight Powerbomb. One, two, no, again, he kicked out. What, what in the world the with these two? They refused to quit. Oh, wait, stopping him. I think uh, Sam was trying to go for an Irish whip. Eric decided not to let him. Driving the head into the knee there as he picks him back up. And now, Poison Rana. We have hit 30 minutes in this match, and neither men refusing to quit. We've only had one 2.9 count. Somehow, at a big shot to the, uh, looks like to the chest there. Now, what does Sammy Guevara have in mind as he puts Eric DeVille into the corner and he's setting him up on the top. Well, what is he going to do this time? What is he setting him up? Spanish fly! But Eric DeVille got up and he's dazed. Poison Rana put him back down. And now turning him over, looking for the cover. That's got to be it. Two. No, he still kicked out. How? The Spanish fly for the top rope, followed by the and Poison this is, Rana. This is still just basically normal rules, no, no weapons, nothing else. It's just, this is all them. Is that, uh, and it doesn't seem like they're stopping anytime soon. You think a knockout would have happened right now? And Sammy Guevara, how does he still have the ability to want to taunt like this? After the Hurricane he went for another pose. How does like he? Like I said, arrogance. Unwaving arrogance. He believes he has this in the win, but he can't see to put away DeVille. And now after the poison Rana, two, and again, DeVille kicks out. Now a shot to the back. Stomp to the back again. And a knee to the back of the head. But Sammy Guevara wasn't able to get up in time, so he couldn't capitalize. And now DeVille bringing him over. And a knee to the midsection. You got to be careful of those knees. Those knee strikes at that weight. What is this? Up on the shoulder. Wait. German suplex out of the electric chair with the bridge. And that is it. Eric DeVille picks up the victory. Finally. The electric chair into a German suplex. Very unorthodox move. But what do you else do you expect from the wicked one? Mm-hmm. My gosh. Tell, 100%. Tell the, tell the viewers what you, I mean, uh, what you thought of that match as we get set up for our next contest. Hardening offense for some of the, well, I guess you say the, uh, the lighter of the combatants. And it still works out in the end for everybody. Yes. A damn fine match.
Uh, very much. But now the question is, what is going to be the condition of Eric DeVille and Sammy Guevara as they both still represent and their uh, perspective... Uh, uh, sides as Eric DeVille getting the first five points for the call for call uh, and unfortunately for Sammy Guevara uh, neither rep uh, starting off with a zero so we'll see how things go at the tournament but my question is how much did that take out of them for the future as we're going to get into the next match as we're going to be seeing the switchblade a uh, J White taking on E C three. Uh, tell, what do you think about these two? I don't have much of an opinion on J White because I don't really know his work all that well. I know E C three is a bit more because of of his promos on Twitter and well, his work on Impact WWE. Honestly, J White might be in for a rough ride. Well, if you don't know much about Jay White, I'll tell you about this man. Not only is he, um, I mean, he goes by not just uh, the Switchblade. I mean, he's K King Switch Edge Blade. He is pretty much the leader of the faction of the Bullet Club. He, I mean, in the last G1 in New Japan, he wrestled in. He, did, he predicted that the you might as well call the tournament the J1. Of course, uh, unfortunately, he did not win that, but he eventually, but he still ended up getting the spoils later on, later on when he took it from Kota Ibushi, the so he could go challenge for the double belts. This man is an amazing athlete and will do anything to win. But now he's gonna have to go against someone you know a little bit better, EC3. Mm-hmm. It is New Japan versus Impact. And it's going on right now. Exactly. Man. This match going to start off now. Uh, you can see that amazing physique out of East T3 there. So definitely going to be easy to say that he probably ha is going to have the strength advantage in this match. As Jay White oh, actually oh, winning that Roman knuckle lock and then going for the draw toe hold. Oh, so I mean your predictions, uh, Mr. Samurai, who do you think is going to walk away with a victory here? I think it might be EC3 to be quite honest with you. Uh, well, definitely. I mean, you never know what can happen. And of course, there is no one, no Bullet Club members, no members of Impact, no one at ringside. It's going to, all these matches will be very fair. It will be all laid up and, oh, a dragon screw, and, but not in the normal way. EC3 was on the ground, and I, I, I don't know. I've never really been in the ring myself, Mr. Samurai, so you have to, uh, uh, but you, so you might have to tell me, is a dragon screw on an opponent who's laying on their back going to hurt more? I've never attempted it myself, but yeah, it might be quite honest with you. And we saw the results of why Jay White went for that immediately going for a uh, version of like uh, maybe an inverted figure, uh, figure four there. Maybe uh, Jay White plans to go a submission uh, tactic throughout this tournament and in maybe even cause injuries uh, for his opponents laying down the line. Probably. Like it, it would be very smart and wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if Jay White would go for a tactic like that. Yeah. As it would it call it would make things maybe yeah. easier for him. Yeah. As Jay White EC3 trade and strike, but it's EC3 who wins that fight and now a diving elbow drop. And now Irish Whip off the rope, but EC3 stopping himself, and now immediately getting caught into a headlock here. It doesn't seem like Jay White wants things to get fast-paced. He wants things to stay slow. He wants to get methodical. That's again locking in another hold here. Very interesting strategy, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. Trying to wear it down the bigger man. Oh, definitely a smart oh blocking that el back elbow, but now getting caught for a suplex there, or. And Bud J. Why able to get back over? That was something mean, a mean suplex. And now, looking to check on the jaw. He says he's number one as he throws that final punch. And oh, EC3 looked like he was going to go to the top rope there, but decided against it. Why would you, Why do you think he would uh, would change his mind so quickly? Maybe we saw J. Why for the get up and was just like, yeah, probably not a good idea to try to fly when this guy is standing. Now, is it normal for EC3 to try to go to the top rope? Not really. 
Uh, AC3 going for a cover, but only a one count. So it's another example of a, oh wait, deadlift German suplex. Jay White showing some power, and then another dragon screw to a laid down EC3. Really trying to do the damage to the leg. Now trying to go for a suplex. He connects with it, and e Jay White is just exploding now with offense. All right, God. Oh, try to go for the clo that big clothesline, but he telegraphed it and just got kicked in the chest. But oh, there's the net breaker. That is what you got to be careful with. Jay White will pick his opportunities and he will hit you hard when you least expect it. As now, going to go off the ropes and there's the Lariat trying to take the head off of Jay White. I'm gonna try to go for the boot, miss it. Oh, grabbing the hair there, pulling him down. And oh, another dragon screw to a laid down EC3. He's really tearing up that leg as he picks him up. And oh, there's the Kiwi Crusher too. And oh, nearly got the victory there, but somehow EC3 is up to his feet first. And again, tried to go for a, oh, oh my God, the low blow. Jay White playing dirty. But somehow EC3 recovered and threw the series of punches. And then a clothesline. I don't know how EC3 uh, is still fighting after taking that low blow. You think he's got a cup? Yeah, probably. You think he Wouldn't probably, probably expected me. this? Oh, another low blow. That one took him down, definitely. And now he's got that submission hold that, again. That figure, that inverted figure four. But no, EC3 was able to break the hold. That was a close one there, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Wow. Now it was this. Oh, the sprinting, the sprinting, apologies, the spinning brain buster. And a back elbow. Oh, but a kick to the head. And that's something, uh, easy to gonna have to be careful when he gets put down. Jay White likes to set up for the, uh, for the Blade Runner when his opponents are on their back. And oh, there's the fl flying in with that corkscrew elbow. Like I said, Jay White is such an explosive opponent. As now, all of a sudden, it seems like he's just going offense at their offense. Now the spinning brain buster again. Now being, but being sent off the rope and a fat jack. I don't know. It looks like EC3 might be the one that's slowing down here. I think he might be getting tired. That's old oh, snake eyes. What do you, what does EC3 need to do to finish this match? I do not see this being a long one. This probably won't be that long, but oh, <laughs> see big, how this is going, but another big clothesline as these two again going back and forth with the strike. But oh, he's saying nah, -uh, as he connects with another huge lariat, and now a jawjacker, but oh, got kicked right in the face with a boot. Now, Jay White still hasn't gone for that Blade Runner yet. You know, he's definitely saving it to try and definitely end the match as EC3 taking the time to taunt here. Is this a mistake? I have and, no idea. As he catches him and set up for another flatjack. I mean, Jay White's a former multi-time uh, cha multi -ch uh, champion, I believe, in New Japan. I know he's won the... Uh, the, the new world championship in New Japan, but oh look at this here it comes Blade Runner and oh 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 my gosh He knocked him out oh. Youch One Blade Runner at EC3 is out cold. He's not moving. Oh That we yeah. said it, We said it wasn't gonna be long, but oh No 13 minutes at least Oh, what does that say about the Jay White for you, uh, uh It Mr. says Samurai? quite a bit about him. It also says quite a Well, okay, first off, is this PG or not? Eh, just don't go too far. It says fuck all about EC3. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, of course, the knockouts also give a few five points. So uh, we got we we're already starting off with two ties there. Uh, not not too surprising. But we're going to be getting into our final match of the of episode one, and it's going to be a quite the interesting one. And it's going to be Lance Archer versus Sammy Callahan. What do you got to say about these two these two individuals? Ooh. Got it's the, gonna be interesting. 
You got the you got the murder hawk monster and the Callahan debt machine. In a way, don't you think these two are kind of the same? Eh, a little bit. But I'm pretty sure Lance Archer is going to have Sammy Callahan for lunch oh, or dinner, whichever way you're whichever way you're watching this from. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Ooh, but I mean, never count out Sammy Callahan. I mean, remember in back uh, in uh, back where over where he's from in Impact, where he's representing with Lance Archer representing AEW. Uh, Sammy Callahan has gone to battles with big men like Lance Archer. Uh, include one very uh, one actually who is on AEW, not representing in this tournament, but one who's well known, Brian Cage. Sammy Callahan was the first to pin Brian Cage in. Uh, in Impact Wrestling, and then later down the line, uh, when they fought for the Impact Championship in a steel cage match, Callahan walked away with the victory. Of course, I mean, this isn't a steel cage. Uh, weapons are technically not legal, but there is time to use them because of how things work here. You got a five count before the disqualification, even if you have to use a weapon. So it's so don't be surprised if uh, some weapons make it used. If we see a baseball bat or something, as this match gonna get started. Now, uh, what do you guys say Sammy Callahan is gonna have to do to beat Lance Archer? Well, like you said, he's probably had to pull out something to probably probably weaken the big man, either attacking the head, attacking the attacking the arms, attacking the legs, whichever. Well, he definitely probably would go for the head. I mean, you got to think he would want to set up for that pile driver of his. He, uh, we've seen him actually utilize two different ones here in UWA. A cradle pile driver that he's even knocked people out with in the past. And a, his normal uh, the uh, cactus, uh, cactus pile driver. Uh, the stump pile driver. Whatever you would like to normally call it. Of course, though, Semichal is going to have to deal with not just the power of Lance Archer, but the athleticism. As uh, Sam Callahan actually taking down Lance Archer with a little bit of a wrestling hold. Uh, if you don't know, Mr. Samurai, I mean, yeah. if we all know Sam Callahan very much for his, you know, his more uh, yeah. brutal style, you know, death matches and stuff like that. Uh, but he's actually a very accomplished re uh, wrestler. Uh, he knows how to wrestle. Of course, he just prefers that more uh, grunged style. And as you saw right there, him mounting on top of Lance Archer and just throwing those heavy right hands as both as Sammy Callahan trying to strike up with Archer. And now Archer with the cover one. Do you think that's a smart idea for Sammy? A little bit, but to uh, strike up with the Murderhawk monster. A little. Like I said a little bit. But well, well, that didn't start out too it well. It just depends on, it depends on where you're striking. Uh, maybe it's just Sammy Callahan, which is continually using his head, literally, as he connects with those headbutts, as he sends now Lance Archer into the corner, and now just booting away at the Murder Hawk monster. And now look at these face washes, just constantly. And that, oh, I thought he was gonna fall out something. Now, now he's got the big man down, at least for a moment. Is a big forearm shot. I'm trying to go for an open palm strike, but oh, scoop slam just shut Sammy Callahan down. But I go oh, out of nowhere. Callahan is, continues to go back to these uh, wrestling holds. Uh, do you think that maybe Callahan's going to try and maybe hold back on that uh, hardcore style? Oh my gosh. As I was trying to say that, look at this. Old school by Lance Archer. She's an undertaker. My gosh, Lance Archer, I mean, he is a tall man. And just look at how, look at how agile he has to, you have to be to be that tall and be walking the ropes like that. That is mm -hmm. something else. As now Lance, <laughs> Sammy with the right to the eyes. And then a forearm, but as I was saying before, you see Sammy Callahan. Oh, wait, he's got the claw. He might be trying to force him down for the EPT claw, but Sammy wouldn't let it happen. But, I mean, that still could have been used as a submission hold. That crawl just crushing a person's head. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, you definitely do. If that hand is on your face, you don't want to be on the mat. That EBT claw has taken out many super, has taken out many wrestlers in the past. It's a very dangerous move. And, oh, follow a slam. But as I was saying, Sammy Callahan was trying, I think he's been trying to go a mixture of his hardcore style. You see with him going for the rake to the eyes. But then he also switches to more technical roots, going for those headlocks. Uh, you think that's to maybe wear down? Oh my gosh! 
You can't even get the question across. I can't because the things just keep happening as Sammy is, was thrown outside the ring by his throat and now weapons are being brought out. We got two baseball bats and a chair, but neither one gets to be used at the forearm strike. And now they're at the clothesline and now just getting right on top and punching away. Now this is technically counting as a uh, as a call for the referee to ask if the referee wants to, uh, if, if the, uh, Wrestler wants to give up and now after hitting that pile driver only got a two count and again He's got the claw. He's got the claw. Will Sammy give up? No, he let him go Sammy cannot allow himself to get onto the ground if he's if he does that will be it the EBT claw He'll bash his skull into the mat Now another right to the eyes and he just flipped him off Sammy Callahan has no fear does he? He has no chill. He does not. Even against someone like the Murder Hawk Monster, he does not seem to care. Oh, a big splash in the corner. Oh, wait, but somehow Callahan fought back, and he's looking for a cradle pile driver. One, two, three. Oh, and Lance just barely kicked out. Somehow Callahan turned the splash into his uh, cradle pile driver. I don't know how he did it, but a big boot put him down. And somehow, even though Lance was uh, the one that nearly got pinned, he's still somehow back on the attack. And again, he sends Callahan to the outside and another steel chair brought out. There's just a pile of weapons right there. And another steel chair and he just flipped them off. There's just weapons all over the floor right there. This could be bad. And another baseball. Oh, he just hit him in the midsection with it. And now an exploder. But somehow Lance is up first. And another weapon. This time it's brought in the ring. Of course, he's got to put it down before count of five. And oh, I think he need him right in the gut. There are so many weapons out here on ringside. Uh, that'd be bad if someone got slammed there. As on, what is this? Oh yeah. Oh. If Lance goes for, if Lance yeets him by his throat again, it's going to be bad if he's selling Sammy Callahan. Very much. As uh, Sammy tried to go for some kind of full Nelson, maybe a dragon soup fight, but the power of Lance Archer too much is a big boo. And oh, but Sammy got up and connected with a discus forearm. He is going toe to toe with the Murder Hawk monster. Does Sammy Callahan, do you think because of how Sammy Callahan, does he have the best chance of dealing with Lance Archer? Possibly. As a big I could see, drop. As I could see, uh, Drew McIntyre possibly staying toe to them, but... You do got a point that. there. Their similar height definitely could. But when it comes to individuals that are much smaller, uh, uh, I think Sammy definitely is one of the, the best to be able to deal with this guy. As again... The other oh. might be... As another might be Eric. Oh, but, could oh, be. Oh. As, oh, God, look at that. No, now he got the claw again. He's got the claw again. Will Callahan give up? No. Somehow Callahan that broke. put in three times so far. Callahan refuses to quit. As he grabs a hold down, there's another exploder. Luckily, not on the chair. At least luckily for Lance Archer. It wasn't. And, oh, pushed him away and then connected with a boo. That reach, that length helps him so much. And, oh, an inverted DDT. Really dropping him on the back of his head. And then a choke slam, followed by a cover. Two. Throw. And Sammy Callahan kicked out. We've yet to see the blackout yet out of Lance Archer. As now, wait, what is this? Setting him up. Oh, powerbomb into the corner. Into the turnbuckle there. Ooh. Can, uh, can you tell the viewers how it, it? Do you know how it feels to get powerbomb into the turnbuckles? I've seen how. I've seen one guy get get done to him, and Adam Rage getting done that done to him by Axel Cage. It's not a comfortable thing, is it? Oh, it's not. It's not I can hear shot. that turnbuckle ring across across the freaking announce booth. Yeah, it says the. Shots to the back, and then that's gonna have definitely help for the effectiveness of the blackout. As now a big clothesline, which I'm surprised we haven't seen Lance Archer try to even go for. He's gone for the EBT claw, uh, and he's done like the choke slam, but he's yet to go for the blackout. Maybe he's trying to do the same thing Jay White did and save his big move. Right, wait, as I said that, blackout, blackout. Just as I was talking about it, he goes for it. He must have heard me. Yeah. 
And now, <laughs> cover two! Da no! What? Somehow, Callahan kicked out, and he's fighting back. How did he kick out of the blackout? I oh, have what? no clue. And again, using that power, just driving down Callahan. And Cal oh, look, Callahan stood up, but he's tired. But he was able to throw a punch. And now, another pile driver. And he's going for the cover. One, two, oh, but Lance kicked out. You got to think, maybe if uh, Callahan went for a better cover. And oh, this time not outside the ring. He got tossed back. And now Lance Archer to the top. Moonsault, no! Sammy moved out the way. He moved out the way. But Archer with the back elbow. Oh, low blow by Sammy Callahan. I'm you surprised the referee is not calling for, for DQ or anything. Uh, I guess the referee just doesn't care about low blows. And now, oh, caught him again, hitting that inverted DDT. The way Lance Archer does that inverted DDT, he really puts emphasis on the back of the head. As again, another pile driver delivered by Sammy Callahan. How many pile drivers do you need to beat Lance Archer? Apparently, three is not enough. Now Irish Whip sent them off the road. Oh, but Callahan countered with a knee to the midsection, and he just flips them off. And now an Irish Whip. Sends him off the road. Him he's number one. And now there, there's the <laughs> <laughs> as the pump kick. Now reversal, sending him back into the ring, and a shot to the back, and again, and a third time. Again, we see once again these wrestlers are just not holding back. They do not care that these. This is just the start of the tournament. They are throwing everything into the hat. As the clothesline was connected, and there's another a big back suplex, snapping Callahan back. And now looking for it again. Blackout. And going for the cover. He's got that leg hook. That's got to be it. And it is. Lance Archer puts away Sammy Callahan. But Damn. my gosh, it took. So much. Do you think that took more than what Archer was expecting? Probably, considering he threw a lot of other moves in, in the mix. At the same time, though, and I could even it can't escape the blackout. It took two whole blackouts, multiple EBT claws, throwing Callahan outside the ring at least twice. He tried to go with the moonsault, and I think if Callahan maybe instead of what maybe would have went for maybe like the uh, that cradle pile driver after that miss of the moonsault, that could have been it for Lance Archer. But who knows at this point? But you know they could always meet again. It's, I do believe when it comes to these G1s, you do face. Uh, the uh, person twice so this is a match we'll end up seeing again at some point and if it's anything to say it will probably be even crazier than the last time but I hope mm -hmm. you all enjoyed this first episode of block a what amazing matches we got to see we have a three-way tie to start things off in the a block here air with when it comes to our winners Eric DeVille Jay White and Lance Archer, these three are now holding the top spot. Of course, I mean, this is only the beginning. So we might see a few uh, uh, a few ties before we start really seeing, you know, people getting placement in the numbers. But uh, what did you, what do you, before we head out of here, Mr. Samurai, what do you think about uh, what happened here tonight? A lot of crazy action, quite a lot of rules brutality, and to quite a few guys I don't want to piss off. All right. Well, Just remind me of that before I start <laughs> start talking shit about them on commentary. Oh, I'll, I might be a part-time wrestler, but I don't want to get killed. Well, I'll be sure to throw you uh, their way if they come over here. <laughs> you <laughs> dick. <laughs> Hey, I'm not a wrestler. I'm just a commentator. All right, I hope you all enjoyed this first episode. Me and Mr. Samurai will see you next time. Peace.